Right, so yeah, we are still here. We are at Romford. It is day one of 2024's horrific, horrific festival. Uh, and I am joined with Cameron Bell, the producer of a short movie made by Darren James King, uh, Yellow. So it's good to meet you. Yellow. Yeah, and what did you do on the film exactly? Uh, so I produced the film along with Darren and uh, Herbert Norville, and uh, I was also the lead actor in it. Oh, but, but, okay. um, <laughs> how, how exactly did you come on to this? Is it, this is you mentioned you've worked with Darren a few times now. Yeah, so um, me and Darren have known each other since 2016. We met on uh, a feature film called independent feature film called Invasion Earth. Uh, which came straight to DVD, and it was all very exciting. I remember that one, yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah. 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 Uh, but, um, yeah, it was all really exciting, and, and I tend to take... The jobs that I've done, I've been really fortunate to meet people who I've grown close to and become really good friends with. Um, and Invasion Earth was no different, because through working on that film, it was two weeks filming in a caravan park in Clacton, absolutely freezing cold the caravans that we're staying in couldn't hold any heat in yeah. so I'm freezing cold uh but the one of the best things about that shoot was um the friends that i made and yeah. one of the friends that i made was darren uh so i've known him it's come out to it'll be eight years in march i don't used to be eight years that i've known him in in march and we've um we've done a couple of uh projects together a couple of short films together um, I also came on board, like production-wise, on on a feature film. In April, uh, I was the associate yeah. producer, uh, but behind that as well. Um, but yellow. Um, what was your question again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just, just how you, of, just how you came just, on board, really. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, so yeah, I I was I was there from really the inception point because. Um, it was, I think it was about two years ago. Whenever I tell this story, it always gets longer. So it, nice. it went for about 18 months and now just maybe just over two years ago. Um, Darren phoned me and he said, uh, I've got this idea for a story, got this script. Um, and uh, he had the title already. He said, Call Yellow and uh, there's a budgie. And I, <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. I love the fact that like, it's called yellow, and it's obviously you're saying it's about a budgie. There is a budgie in there, but it's like it's not a massive part of it. It's just so cool that it's there. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, I think that's where the intrigue comes. Yeah, um, because it's it's not deli- you're not being directly pointed at what the story is going to be about, um, but it is the a device within the film. Absolutely. Uh, and um, yeah, he st- he pitched me the story vaguely, and it was. No spoilers, so I can't really say any more. <laughs> but um, he, uh, yeah, I said, oh, that's, I said, that's pretty cool. And he said, oh, well, you can be the lead. And I was like, oh, great, okay. <laughs> so I'm fine. And, uh, and we didn't have the resources to, to do it at the time. Mm-hmm. It was, the story hadn't changed very much from what you saw tonight. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, we just didn't have the resources. We didn't have, I believe it boiled down to finance and personnel that we didn't right. really have on that. Um, so that was put on the back burner. You know, a few projects go that way because, yeah. you know, you just don't have it. It's just not the time for it. And you're fine with it and you move on. There's normally something else coming up the track, you know, a little bit later on. But um, in December 2022, we did a, a short film called The Players in which we shot in uh, South End uh, Free Sprite Media in there. Right. Studio in South End. Okay. Which is really cool. Um, it's sort of in the same vein as, as Yellow, that sort of horror, more saw influenced nice. that film. That was really fun. Uh, and uh, it was the first time that, again, normal, these things normally start with a phone call from Darren. <laughs> and he goes, I've got this story. It was like, okay, tell me more. Um, and um, Tell me more. You're the lead. Tell me more. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I'm on. Uh, and. Uh, Darren started telling me this story of the players and my imagination went wild mm. and I was just like, oh my God, I've got like so many, this is amazing. Yes, let's do it. And then Darren gave me a choice. He said, because he's put a lot of his money into the project that he's done before and he's worked very hard and he was like, okay, I'm not going to produce this one. And I was okay. like, okay. And he said, so if you want to do it, you're going to have to stump up the money. 
and there was this pause and Darren was such a good friend he was like you know it's about I've given you the opportunity yeah. you know you've got to take it and uh, and I was like okay I in my head I was working out you know how am I going to do it how am I going to do it but uh, stepped into it and um, over a weekend uh, we shot a short film in the studio with a big set piece and um, had the most amazing weekend. Yeah. Um, and I won't forget it because it was the first short that I like solely produced. And um, and it was this, we wrapped on the 16th of December, 2022. So I came away from that weekend and I was thinking, ah, that's nice. I was like, oh, Christmas, bit of Christmas break, new year, yeah. come back to it in 2023. And, uh, and the the shoot for that was quite intense. But my voice was gone. I had bruises all over me, and you know it was quite a rough and rough yeah. film. And a couple of days later, I get a message from Darren saying, uh, "Do you remember Yellow?" And I was like, "Yeah, I remember Yellow." And he was like, "Do you want to do it?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was just- <laughs> He got me. He's so good at getting me. He, um, the excitement was there, and we had the resources, which was part of the main reason why we didn't do it before, because the DP for Yo, uh, Tom Laxton, right. um, who's a very sort of up and coming. He's uh, twenty five, I think, 20, uh, 25 years old. He's done some very exciting stuff. He's done a couple of Netflix projects, and we brought him on mm. um, to the players, and he struck up uh, quite a good creative collaboration with darren on that shoot and uh darren identified that and he was like we now have yeah. one of the key people that we need in order to make you know what it is so i was like yeah and we just had the bug and it was quite nice what i've mentioned to people earlier it, it kind of that excitement from the players and that adrenaline um kind of snowballed into yellow yeah. And then uh, Yellow, the excitement from Yellow snowballed into another short film, 13 Seconds, which is um, yeah, on the festival circuit right now with uh, Leon and, and George. Um, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, the, um, it was a phone call from Darren, and two years later, we did the film. So, it, yeah, it was uh, it was great. You, but I was there from the beginning. So it was always in the back of my mind. Yeah. Ever since we had that conversation. And what aspect do you... Pr- not prefer, but what aspect of the whole situ- uh, the whole um, industry or the whole situation of making a movie, filmmaking, do you enjoy more? Like, because you're obviously carrying a couple of caps now. Mm-hmm. You're an actor. You're a producer. Mm. What what feeds you more? Uh, love that question. Um, they both. Both caps feed me, but for for different reasons. And I think the producer cap appeals because of the responsibility that you have to get a project to where it needs to go. Because earlier on in in my career, um, it would just be the single actor and you do it and you do a really good job and the best job that you can do at the time. Mm -hmm. And then through external forces or, or... you know stuff didn't get to where it needed to be yeah. and there was always that disappointment factor that you have and th- these things happen they always do um so i think what i identified that that having that responsibility to it's on your head yeah. it's on your shoulders you know if it doesn't get to where it needs to go and there's no reason for it not to get to where it needs to go. It, it, it's nobody else's fault but your own. I like that. Uh, and that's what I identified for that. However, um, acting for me uh, is just amazing. Um, it's sort of, I have likened it in the past to Oxygen. Because okay. it's there is so much fun, and I I was chatting about earlier to you, but um, buzzword for me is is fun yeah. because I just with everything that I do uh, creatively, and you try and transfer it into like what you do in in the outside world. Yeah. I say outside world, but you know you you muggle world. world, the real yeah. world, right? Uh, uh, you try you and just have say mu- muggle world. I say muggle world. Yeah, can't believe you I just think. said that. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bug of jobs, yeah. Uh, but um, 
because it's magic. Because it I, I know, I know. Uh, but um, no, it's it's that sort of feeling of yeah. There's when you come away from a shoot or just doing a table read. I'm I'm that kind of person. Just table reads. Um, I get the the yeah. the, the fire. And somebody that. said to me, funnily enough, it was Darren. Darren. Darren was on the phone one time and. Uh, I could hear the other person on the end of the line, and uh, the other person said, "Well, why? Why do you do it? It's like, why? Why do you make film? Why do you do it?" And he said, "Because it feeds my soul." Absolutely. And I, I, I that. went, "That's so perfect." Yeah. It's like that's I love that. maybe not on those words exactly, but it's it's almost it's that it's that yeah. sort of it gives you that fire. You it lights the fire and it keeps you going. Um, so yeah, but acting and producing different appeals but yeah both very enjoyable and with that you um you mentioned during the q a and we were talking about it outside um this is the first time you've seen yellow up on the on the yeah. big screen oh so any any actor and any producer or any creative can tell me everything that's wrong with it when they see it up on the big screen they can <laughs> tell me every little thing that's wrong with it but i like to ask when you were sat there tonight watching it was there any one thing that you saw up on the screen and you thought we absolutely nailed that. Something you're just so proud that you got. Honestly, I am was, and I can feel it right now on my chest, like I was absolutely buzzing when I saw it. And because one of the things I mentioned to you earlier, one of the things that I was worried about was the DCP going yeah. wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and uh, I made I made the DCB, so oh, again, well, it's was like your fault. Uh, <laughs> it would have been my fault anyway. But um, but no, um, honestly, for the first twenty seconds, I was like, okay, is this playing, how's the sound, how's the video, how's the what? And then when I realised that it was all good, I could relax into it. And then you just there's that moment where you just take it in yeah. for me, and and you just go, oh my god, like it's here. That's my baby. That's, that's, yeah, that's our. I always, I'm very careful because I always, with me, I like to instill that it's not one person. It's yeah, like no, a team, yeah. you know. So not that I would, you know, uh, tell somebody off if they were like, oh, it's mine. But I, I I, very much put it back to the team. I was like, it's, it's I was sitting there going, look at, look at what we did. Yeah. Like, look at, and it's on like a big screen. <laughs> It's like with people in the auditorium. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah, it, it, it was buzzing. I think I'm still coming down. Actually, in the Q and A, um, I was, I was kind, of, I had the adrenaline, so I was kind of trembling a little bit. Right. Um, but it was because it was coming down from that buzz. Yeah. That I carried the whole way through because, yeah, that, it's the first time I got to see it on a cinema screen, and yeah, it was very special. And I did take photos. I did use my phone in the auditorium. I'm just going to put it out there. You, you've got it. I have to. I mean, Sorry. The, the thing is, like, I think if you do that in like something like Oppenheimer, you're going to get your, your ass kicked. But I think when, you, when you're doing it at a film festival and you are a producer and you're in it, it's okay. You know? I think so. We'll I think I can off. justify it that way. Just don't have it too bright, please. No, no. no just flash <laughs> off. What what do you um what do you plan on doing next? What are you moving towards now? Well, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm doing a a, a night shoot, a, just a one night shoot in um, uh, Reading for a, a short film again, uh, headed by Darren, um, called The Meat. Uh, again, we got Tom Laxton on board, but but we've got um, Holly Prentice and cool. um, Thomas Stocker, who's uh, going to be that two hander, those leads, those two leads. Um, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. That story is, again, it's been something that's been kind of rolling around in the background for a while. And uh, the script has changed and it's been redrafted. But um, again, it's different. The the things that me and Darren do, they're never the same. We're never yeah. going to do the same thing twice. You know, there'll be a difference because, I don't know, something will be different. Because I, I specifically chatted him about it. I was like, okay you realize that if we just stay in one place, you're just going to get too comfortable in this box yeah. and you're not, never going to really like push yourself to do things outside. But yeah, it's, yeah. So that's on the 15th of March cool. and, um, 
there's a uh, another short that potentially we're looking well not potentially we are looking for investors in uh that is a revenge thriller but a female-led revenge yeah. thriller and yeah, you mentioned um, that. I'm, I'm quite intrigued by that yeah it's it should be really cool we um funding pending uh, yeah. but to be honest even if it isn't funding pending we'll probably do it anyway <laughs> so uh, we'll find a way but, to do but it. if there is anyone out there throw some money that way yes please let's get it made <laughs> uh yeah um but, uh, but yeah, that's 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 really the only the two things that I've got sort of immediate in the immediate future coming up. So, would you ever consider because Darren makes a lot of shorts and and they're all very different genres. Would would you ever consider maybe turning one of those shorts into a feature, or is there anything that you look at in his career so far and you're like, we should really embellish on that? Uh, funnily enough, one of the things that we get the feedbacks that we do get when we send stuff to people before we actually go and do the festival circuit yeah. <coughs> is uh more than one occasion we've got a this should be a feature yeah um uh, and finance it just comes yeah. down to finance yeah. it's we'd love it we'd we'd love to i'd love to um but uh but yeah it just comes down to finance and you could do it on a shoestring budget but it's you do need that investment in order to get a decent product at the end it's not well it is we we'd love to be able to pay proper rates and we'd love to be able to yeah. really kind of give people what they want and do it for um so you do have to go we could do it but the end result would probably not be would not reflect yeah. uh, the the talent that we we have if we didn't have a proper budget. So, but yes, is the answer to your question I'd love to do. I think there's about two or three shorts that me and Darren have done that we've gone, oh, damn, this can be a feature. Like, this can be a feature. Is, is there a way you could kind of mash them into like, it all be in one universe? Well, uh, that's an interesting idea. I think it's something that maybe I mentioned to Darren before, um, but um, that's, that's always open. The, the, the opportunity, the, the resources are always there. So it's it, it's just a question of going, how does this fit into this? Yeah. How do we make this make sense? Um, how do we build on the story? Because it has to, you can't just jam two of them together. There's yeah. got to be some sort of link to it. And, you know, if that happens in post. But it's definitely something that I'd be up for. And I'm always up for it, to be honest. So um, this, is, this is a little bit of, a, of an interesting question. Uh, it's not an easy question, I don't think. Um, Get ready for it. <laughs> why are you in the film industry? Why did you want to be in the film industry? Ah. Uh, do you know... There is... There, there's been times where I've gone through it in my head and go why 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 <laughs> like why yeah and i'm sure that there are other actors who because it is a frustrating industry at times it's it is an industry of can be an industry of rejection yeah. can be an industry where you compare yourself to your compatriots yeah. and your contemporaries um and there have been moments, there are, you know, and I know that there are actors out there, I know that I've gone, why, why am I doing this? To me, it's the feeling of being, as I mentioned earlier, the feeling of just having so much fun. Yeah. And that's sole, that's one of the sole reasons why I act, because uh, it's just so fun. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, you get to do stuff that, you get to create lives and characters and chemistry and if you go 100% into it, which I feel is sort of coming because earlier I started in musical theatre. All right. Um, so I, I was uh, comedic relief, so I played a lot of comedy characters and... Um, I can do a comedy and I, I like comedy and I'm, I admire people who can do comedy very yeah. well. Um, but 
throughout my career, I've kind of transitioned from musical theatre. When I was in uni, I started to do uh, plays. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do sort of uh, new writing, some more sort of gritty, grounded dramas and, and did some really good stuff there. And then I transitioned again to film. And through no, at no point, at no point did I ever think I don't want to do this. Yeah. You know, I do, at no point I was like, nah, it's not for me. It's, it is for me. And it's that, it's that pull. I can't, I, I, I have, um, I have a job, you know, you, you have to have an in income yeah, of at this stage and you have to pay your bills. And ideally I'd love to move away from that and be able to be self financially self-sufficient through acting. And, um, but, uh, at the end of, the day there's still that that pull yeah. and when that goes i don't think it will ever go but you know when something goes and you don't enjoy it and you don't that's the time to go uh, maybe reassess and that's not happened it's through i started oh when i was well earlier than that but 16 17 was when i I took that next step yeah. and joined a, a, a musical theatre group. And through that group, I did uh, amazing shows like Hairspray and Fame and Billy Elliot and like did like proper theatres yeah. and proper audiences. And, and um, that was the journey. And I'm now 32 or 31, 32 in April. <laughs> uh, and um, I haven't lost. I haven't lost it. It's, it's, it just does go. And that's that's why I do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm I'm glad you haven't because we we need people like yourself within this industry. Um, speaking to you now, I can I can feel a lot of passion coming from you, and that's exactly why we at Nerdly and we at Romford do what we do is because we want your movies. We want mm. people who want to make movies, who are passionate about movies, and who get it. And and you definitely seem to get it. So keep plugging away at it. I want to yeah, see more from you guys. I think <laughs> Yellow is a, a massive step up for Darren um, in terms of things that I've, I've seen that he's made previous. And some of that may, in fact, be down to a cinematographer that just works well with you um, because visually, Yellow's gorgeous. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. What I want to ask you to do is to pitch Yellow to people who haven't seen it, why they should check it out. Okay, um, <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> yellow doesn't pretend to be anything that it isn't. What you see is what you get with Yellow. You are engaged and drawn in, and there is no way out. There's device in Yellow that... It's just, I mean... Visually, and I can say this, I, I can take a step back. Mm. And it sounds biased, and yes, I am biased, <laughs> but I do say it objectively. Yellow looks amazing, yeah. and that's one of the reasons why you should go and see it. Because <laughs> it's just, for what it is, and I've just come from seeing it on big Huge cinema screen, screen. Yeah. and honestly the gorgeousness is just a hundred percent. So that's definitely a reason to just go and see it right off the bat. Um, story wise, if I had to say, um, it's chilling, mm -hmm. it's chilling. It's uncomfortable. It's disturbing. It disturbed me when I first watched it because it was so much, it was past the, the time it was wrapped and obviously it had been through post-production the very first time that I watched it I my stomach was in knots and I was just like we've done such a good job here yeah. a job that we didn't even know um disturbing uncomfortable uh engaging it draws you in but you don't know why it draws you in yeah 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 <laughs> the shit the, the subject matter of it should do anything but draw you in yeah but you you're sort of like you're, you're invited into this sort of horrific situation and, and you can't get out of it mm. but you, you just have to be part of it yeah and that's that's some of the best movies yeah absolutely and uh 
And it's got some great uh, debut performances from uh, <laughs> Michelle McRae, who okay, uh, yeah. plays the the unfortunate uh, in the kitchen. <laughs> it was her very first acting job. Nice. So, and she again, she took it completely on the chin, and she just ran with it, which was great. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. I, I, there's. I feel like if I wasn't so excited and so happy and so proud, I could do it justice. I could yeah. do the, a better job of this, but right, it's... That's why I ask it. Put yeah. You, put you on the spot. Oh, yeah. I, I love that. Best do way it. of finishing interviews is to put them right on the spot. Yes. <laughs> yes. And seeing what I went through with the yellows, probably that was on the spot as well. So, yeah. And did, that's right. Did you know you can... Uh, I, I know as an actor, you, you play many different sort of roles and you've got to um, have a, a bag of tricks, but... Did you kind of know that you you could go there? Yeah. 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 It it was. Um, it's. Uh, I knew that I could do the job, and I think it came with the preparation beforehand. Right. Um, I tend to lean more towards. I remember uh, a previous agent saying to me, meeting me for about five minutes afterwards, she said, oh, I can really see you in dark, psychotic roles. And uh, so I must have had that. And then I've had people come up to me and, and say, oh, you're such a nice guy. How can you play <laughs> such a role? Um, yeah, I, it, it comes down to I'm quite method in, right. um, in my approach. I like to draw on past experiences, but it doesn't. it's not like a therapy for me. I use it as a tool to get yeah. to where I want to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's because you've got to be real with your emotions. Um, and I think that me personally, my approach is you embody and you develop a character. So prep wise, it was all about backstory. It was about look, it was about how it would, you know, how it would feel. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, it was, it was comfortable for me. Um, comfortable, <laughs> as, comfortable as, as comfortable as it could be but the, the the what what did surprise me i guess because it was the very first time that i sort of delved so deep into that sort of role was the time that i would have to decompress mm -hmm. because and that was about four or five days uh to come down from because you've got adrenaline for being on a on a set and you've um you've obviously got when you're packing so much intensity into one day um, in a enclosed space, that flat was quite small. Yeah. Uh, so it was all, the energy was very sort of packed in. Uh, but yeah, it, it took some time to kind of come down fully. And that, that, that was, you know, it, I was very sort of easy and be like, okay, you know, just kind of work your way back into the yeah. normal world and, you know, make sure you have some music on and, you know, it's, it, it, was, it was fine. It was great. But yeah, it was so much fun. Oh. fun all the time that's that's with everything i i try and have yeah. as much fun as i can with tell it. that about you i like that yeah it's very passionate very passionate well cameron thank you so much for sitting down with me and doing this thank you for giving us your movie yeah. uh thank you for being here to watch it up on the big screen i'm glad we got to show it and uh most of all just keep keep plugging away keep, keep going Always. at it Sitting here speaking to you, I have absolutely no doubt that y you guys are onto something incredible, and you'll something's going to hit, and people are just going to throw all the money at you, and <laughs> that's going to be great. This time next year. <laughs> this time next year. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, no. uh, and on that bombshell, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this. Cheers, Kev. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> this time next year. <laughs>